Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, rolls being passed, uh, starting over here and going around. Hopefully, uh, you all get it. Uh, some people are coming in a little bit late. Uh, I may start having to collect the uh, the uh, attendance sheet uh, before everybody gets here. Uh, because they're going to show up at halftime, they're not really showing up for the class at all. Um, okay. I'm going to go over a little bit. Uh, I know I think it's next week we have a pres have presentations in our tutorials uh, by students about photos and graphics. I don't want to totally steal their thunder, but there it's as we get started with our uh, our next project, our our second uh, major project. It's important that you understand photos. Uh, looking at uh, Looking at some of the photos that you took, you didn't take my you didn't take me at my word. I have a lot of smiling at the camera sort of photos, um, which I which I don't like, uh, which I made pretty clear I don't like. Um, they are better than nothing, and that's about what they're better than. Um, so I want to talk about that. Uh, it becomes particularly important in layout, as we talked about before about. Uh, um, creating a center of focus. Uh, we kind of talked about it in, uh, in, in talking about how we build stories. In the same sense, we have to have all the hammers and nails and bricks and mortar and whatever we need in order to build a, a, a good page, a good news page. If we don't have all the stuff, all the parts to it, we can't build a good page. So, frankly, there are a lot of pages and newspapers that aren't very good. And it's not just because they're bad at design, it's because they don't have all the elements. And so it's not everybody's done their job. They haven't all gotten the, the, the reporters um, and the photographers have not provided all the elements they needed to do a good job. And some of it's because they're in a hurry. There's lots of reasons why we don't do perfect, web, uh, perfect news pages uh, all the time. And that includes me. Um, and, uh, and that's just the reality of life. That's one reason why we look in the, in, the, in the textbooks and we see these beautiful front pages and then we analyze the 33 front pages of, uh, of top newspapers in America and none of them look like the award-winning pages that we see uh, in the textbooks uh, because they're in a hurry. Uh, they, they have figured out that, uh, uh, I mean, they have actually laid off a lot of their workers already because of the of the uh, loss of uh, ad revenue. Uh, so they've lost two thirds of their ad revenue. Now these photos that are these pages that I took out um, and I need to get them, uh, probably upload them. In fact, I have them someplace already on Moodle. I need to move them over to our, uh, to our Moodle site uh, for those that are gonna teach that lesson in particular. Remind me if you don't see them soon. Um, they might even be there someplace, and I just haven't moved them into, into a, the appropriate folder yet. But uh, anyway, those 33 front pages that I, that I copied, and, and uh, they are a, a few years old, but they're not as old as the textbook that showed us all the, the uh, wonderful things that you can do with the front page. The textbook's older than the, than the pages that I, that I copied. So it is still the reality that in everyday work, we're we're having to deal with what we what we can what with the content we have, and with the uh, the time that we have. A lot of newspapers are now making their photographers also their photographer. I mean, their reporters also their photographers. Uh, one of the easiest places to cut was the photography staff, uh, and they hand a camera. In this modern day, most uh, uh, reporters have a camera with them, and all for all intents and purposes, they have their mobile phones. And so more and more reporters are having to do their own photography. And they've not been trained to be uh, top flight uh, photojournalist. Uh, even some of the photographers aren't top, haven't been trained to be top flight photojournalist. They're just photographers who got a job in the newspaper and they've become photojournalists because that's the job they have. But that doesn't necessarily mean they've been taught what to really be looking for as a photojournal, as a photojournalist and not just as a photographer. Uh, those are two different things. Um, okay, so let's talk about this a little bit, and then I want to go back and talk uh, some about uh, about Quark Express uh, because uh, we it's time for us to start using it. I uh, 
I tried. Uh, you were supposed to have completed a uh, uh, a quiz by the uh, this morning or sometime today, and uh, you, probably to your benefit that you probably didn't do it yet, uh, because we'll be talking about some of the things that might give you some hints at at some of the answers to some of the questions. Um, there are, I gave you, by the way, two minutes for every question, which is a little more than I usually give, because I expect you're going to have to look at, you're going to have to try to look for some of the answers. Uh, and I'm more, con I'm more interested in you knowing the answers than I am in what score you get. Um, <clears throat> photo uh, uh, photojournalism is important for several reasons. First off, in the competition for readership or for audience, it's probably better said audience than readership because you're competing against uh, all of the other n media. I was going to say news media, but you're actually competing against more than just news media. Uh, a lot of young Americans your age in America get uh, say they get most of their news off of the late night comedy shows um, where the comedians are telling the news and making fun of the of, of President Trump or whoever they want to make fun, fun of uh, that day. Uh, that's not really news. Uh, but. Um, nonetheless, a lot of them are getting it there. Others are getting their news off of Facebook, which uh, there is no, a lot of, I, mean, I post a lot of news to Facebook, but I wouldn't suggest that's the best place to get your news. Um, so, you know, people are getting news at a lot of places that maybe are not ideal locations to get news from. Uh, but, uh, and then of course, you're actually competing against entertainment too. You're, you're, you're competing for people's time. That's what you're competing for. As I mentioned before, what you're selling is people's attention, their time and attention. That's what you sell when you sell advertising. Uh, and those that don't understand that are probably the ones, a lot of those that are, that are failing. They think circulation of their newspaper is what they're selling. No, they're not selling circulation of the newspaper. They're selling their, the time and attention of their readers. And if they don't understand that, that's why they're losing two-thirds of their advertising. Um, we can see from this example, um, that uh, obviously photography uh, adds a lot to a page. Uh, the other one does have some graphics on it, and graphics are nice, but you're going to be naturally attracted to a page that uh, has more art on it, more color, uh, obviously, but also more photography is preferred over graphic art by the normal human being. Um, the, uh, the design, uh, is important, and how do you work around? Excuse me, work around your your photography. Uh, how do you? We talked about the golden triangle. Um, this is not a golden triangle. This is how has all the art right down the middle, and that's okay. Uh, it is does uh, they, they did put a piece of art to the right there to break up uh, some of the grayness, um, but not every page has a golden triangle. That's not the only way to design, but you do want art spread around enough that it will get people's eyes going, you know, coming to your page and, and through and around your page. And so ultimately, you're looking for visual appeal that will get people to come to your, your medium as opposed to somebody else's medium. And that, again, includes all the other media and uh, not just news, but everything that tempts somebody to not read your newspaper. And there's more and more of that all the time. Uh, just some examples of cropping again. Uh, first off, selection of photos is, is very important. How you crop the photos is just as important. Uh, what's the focal point of, of your photo? Are there people in your photo? I got quite a few uh, photos uh, from you all that had no people in them. Some of your best photos had no people in them. But that means that they're not as good at photos because photos, people naturally look more at photos that have people in them, uh, not just machinery or whatever you might take a, take a photo of. So try to get people in your photos. Um, and the, the cropping to the, to the right, you can see how different it is, whether in, in how, whether or not you get kind of the environment uh, in which somebody is posed. And again, there might be different reasons for cropping, different ways. Um, however, the second one obviously is quite different in the, in the one to the right, in that you realize now he's not on the first floor. Uh, you, you, looking at the one on the left, you would, uh, 
the, of the old man we're talking about, old man, probably 10 years younger than me. Um, he's, you know, you don't have a perspective of, of where he's looking from, uh, but you had, do have a closer up of him. Uh, on the left, you start getting more interesting detail, perhaps, in the, in the crop photo. It depends what you're after, but cropping is, a, is an extremely important part of your job uh, as you put together these pages. If you do not crop at all, you can expect to get a lot of deductions on your grade because uh, most photos have dead space and they certainly have a variety of ways of, of uh, focusing on what's important. How do you size a photo? Part of it is a, is a focus on its value. Uh, how important is this photo? Uh, certainly that's, uh, that's a major part. And, and it's comparative to all the other photos, all the other graphics on your page. Uh, you can't remove it. You can't remove that decision from the environment in which it's made. And the environment in which it's made is your news page. And so you'll be given certain pages. You'll get given news stories with them. You'll be given photos with them. And so how you size and crop your photos will be all a matter of, uh, it'd be a, like I say, you'll be comparing all your photos. Uh, and I will care whether you chose the right photo, uh, whether you chose a photo that really uh, stands out, that is well composed, well cropped. Uh, again, a photo with a person in it is better than a photo without a person in it. But you may not have that choice for your top photos. Uh, so you have to deal with what you have. I, I, you know, there's nothing you can do about it, and, and I need to be somewhat um, careful in how I grade you in, in, trying, to, in, in trying to recall or, or review what photos you had to choose from. Uh, you have to be very careful in how you size photos with how many heads are in it. That's the way I call it anyway. How many heads do you have in your photos? If in, if, uh, for example, the lower photo on the left, you have about 10 heads in it or so, maybe more than that. That photo is no good at all as a two-column photo. Don't try to make that, that, co that photo into a two-column photo. Uh, right now, it's a, it's a four-column photo. It will, it will be okay as a four-column four photo. It is not okay as a two-column photo. Uh, if you have too many heads and try to squeeze them in too small a space, um, you don't get nearly the detail you need to really be able to see it. Uh, so you need to be doing some cropping and get some of the heads off out of it. Uh, you cannot have, I've seen people try to put four or five people into a one column photo. That's absurd. Yes. When you, when you, you can't put those into a one column photo. Uh, your detail is such that so, so it makes the, the photo totally worthless. Um, so a photo like the one you see in the lower left uh, is, is fine in the layout that it's at. It's in a four column uh, layout or four column uh, size. Uh, you can see enough detail with that. that. That's fine. Don't try to go any smaller than that. That's, that's too many heads for a three column, probably. I'd probably deduct for a three column. Um, but it certainly, I, like I said, I've seen people try to squeeze that into two column. No, 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 no. Yet, 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 yet. Uh, never. Don't, don't try to do that. So be very aware that if you have too many heads, they then there's gonna, those heads are going to be smaller and smaller and smaller as you reduce that photo, and you do not get enough detail to, to make it worth your while. And so don't, don't think about that. Um, so whereas a head and shoulders, you can make that even into a half a column. One head into a half a column is fine. You get enough detail in a half a column, that's okay. But when you've got ten heads, you can't squeeze them into two columns. That's beyond... The, the, the possibility. Uh, be aware, um, I went, the, the second bullet item there is biggest danger is too small. Um, and that's what, again, beginners fall prey to time after time. They start, start making their photo too small. Don't, 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 don't do that. Um, there, of course, there's opportunity, as in uh, both of these cases, to make multi multi photo photo packages. So we talked about uh, multi story packages the other day. 
and this N very frequently a multi-photo story relates to a, a multi-story uh, package, uh, but not always. Uh, you have, if you have a major event uh, and uh, you think it's worth more than one photo and, you know, you're comparing it again with all the other news you have, all the other photos you have, then, uh, then that's fine. That, that you use the photos you have, you make it even more dominant uh, on your front, on your page, and, uh, and, and, and you go with it. Uh, retouching, um, you can't do that in Quark. You'd have to do that. Um, I believe the, uh, uh, the Apple computers all have their own uh, photo software, photo editing software, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But uh, I haven't used it, so I'm not real familiar with it. Uh, if we, uh, you probably have access to something that you can do some photo editing with. I, I've told, I think, everybody that attended their, their uh, uh, tutorial last week, or I guess it was last week, week before, whenever it was, uh, about, uh, about uh, Orphan View. Let me just uh, review it again real quickly, which means I need to, uh, let me come back to that. Uh, I have to stop the video and stuff. I don't want to do that. But Urban View uh, is uh, is a free Photoshop, basically. Uh, quite good. It d does have all the photo touching, retouching sort of tools to it. Uh, they, they're found at a different location. And in fact, they don't even come up automatically. The retouching tools don't come up automatically like they tend to in Photoshop. But they're there. Uh, you can do, uh, you have to go to editing, I believe, and open up the palette for retouching. Um, and so you can you can do quite a you can do a lot of the same things you can do with Photoshop, um, and as I said, it's free, which it makes it nice. Uh, but you really don't do a lot of retouching in the sense of uh, taking you know a mole off of somebody's face or something like that. You don't need to do that's you know we're not portrait photographers, uh, so mostly we would use it for uh, making it lighter, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, flopping it. We've talked about flopping photos. You can do that on, on uh, Quark, within Quark itself. Um, you can also, of course, uh, you know, size them. You can decide uh, what format to have them in, uh, how many DPI to have them uh, output in. Uh, the, uh, one of the videos that you are supposed to watch uh, does say that you should have at least 300 DPI, DPI dot per in, dots per inch. Um, you may not be aware, but that's how photos are made. They're made with dots. Um, they're not pure photos. Um, it's more obvious in black and white photos than it is in color photos. But uh, uh, if you take a magnifying to them, you see, uh, especially to black and white, you see that there is no gray in a black and white photo. Uh, it looks gray, but, what, but the gray in a black and white photo is an optical illusion um, that where you think you see gray, the black dots are smaller, and so there's more white around the black dots, and it makes it look gray, but it's not gray. Uh, it's all black and white, pure black and white, no gray in them. Um, and so that's how they are made up. They're made up of big dots, small dots, um, and in a, in a black and white, that, that gives you the sense of gray tone, but there is no gray. Um, so when we talk about dots per inch, and they are literally dots that are giving you the, um, the impression of, uh, of, of uh, a filmed based uh, photograph, which, which they're not. Um, so they need at least 300. And for better quality, like magazines, you probably go higher than that, than 300, uh, if your photography can, can, uh, can stand up to that. Um, and, and there's, uh, but more, there'd be color corrections, adjusting for brightness. One of the things that the, uh, the uh, Quark tutor, you might say, uh, uh, explained that uh, things always look brighter on your monitor than they do in the print. And that's also true monitor as opposed to uh, projection. And so the projection is probably more like what you're going to see it as when it's printed than I'm seeing it at here in the monitor. 
and that is quite a bit darker than it is here in the monitor. Uh, so that would be, you know, some of these, like the lower right one is too dark. Uh, so you need to brighten that up. Uh, and if I were, you know, meticulous and had the time to do it, I would have brightened it for the projection. I would have thought about that and brightened those photos for the projection purposes as well. Because you can really hardly see what's in the, the lower right photo. Um, I've had some very embarrassing experiences with photography, and I won't, I don't have time to go, go through them, but uh, I don't want you to have to learn the hard way. Um, as, a, as a young publisher, a 25-year-old newspaper publisher, I had to do all the darkroom work and everything, and obviously before digital photo photography. And uh, anyway, I made some mistakes um, and did have to learn the hard way. In your, if you're doing any retouching or changing, the main rule is don't do anything that changes the meaning of the photo. Uh, don't, don't change the photo so much that it changes the meaning. Um, so I, I think most, uh, as I've explained else, uh, before, uh, you can flop a photo. In reality, that does change a person's look. You know, we have two halves of our face, and one half looks one way, and one half looks the other way. So if you flop the photo, then you basically flop the sides of their faces. Uh, but that's not so meaningful that we really care. That's, that doesn't change the, the, the meaning of the content uh, in a significant way. But you don't want to be embarrassed. That's for that reason, you don't want to flop a photo that has a, a, a name tag on it, where suddenly their name is spelled backwards, and like a mirror uh, impression of it. Um, you don't want to do that because you just don't want to look stupid. But it's not because it's immoral or unethical. You just don't want to look stupid. And so you have to be careful. There's a sign in the background, welcome home. You don't want to flop that photo. Um, so most photos you can flop and nobody will care. You know, have them look in the other direction. As I mentioned the other day, what we're trying to avoid is having them look off the page. And so this photo here, the, the lower one, the one in the lower left, they're looking very strongly to the right. So it's on the left side of the page, so they're looking into another story. That's okay. They have to, I mean, you, you don't want to eliminate all stories, I mean, all photos that look left or right. That's not what I'm asking. You want to make sure, though, that they're looking strongly to the right, that the, that the photo is positioned towards the left. So they're looking into the story. If you flop that photo, if you imagine it being flopped, and then looking off the page, then it naturally draws the reader's eyes off the page. You don't want to draw their eyes off the page. And so uh, you, have, you have it that, like that, a, a photo that's looking to the right, you have on the left side of the page, so they're looking into another story. So mostly what we're doing with, in photojournalism is fairly minor um, adjustments to our photos, making them lighter, maybe doing some color correction, uh, changing the DPI, and so forth, uh, and certainly cropping. We're trying to enhance them. We're not trying to change the meaning of them by any, any we're not trying to make a actress, uh, some, some uh, tabloid newspapers, uh, tabloid in the, in the sense of a negative comment. Uh, those newspapers that are, that are known to be a little bit uh, misleading. And some magazines have been caught touching up their photos in a way that they're not really touching up. They're making, um, Older actresses look skinnier, stuff like that. That's changing reality. Uh, and you don't want to get caught doing that. So one of the first things you want to look at is what photos really do complement your story. Um, that is, what do you, your photos should help tell your story. That's the whole point of them, or not the whole point, but a major point of a photo is to help tell the story. There's that saying, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, and that is why we're using them to, to a large degree. One is for just to attract people's attention, that's true. But part of it's also because they can say things that you can't, that are very difficult for you to say in words, for you to try to explain in words. And so if you can get a photo to say something that you, that you would struggle to say, to explain in words, then do it. Uh, that's what we're looking for. So uh, you're, you're looking for a photo that will help tell your story. 
uh, hopefully you've taken or somebody has taken those photos that help tell your story. Again, uh, you're going to crop to try to enhance the image and that cropping will depend on what you're trying to get out of that photo. What, what is the story you're trying to tell with that photo? That guy standing in that lighthouse or whatever he was, uh, you know, that it's a totally different story when you crop him down so low that you don't realize he's standing on the second floor uh, and looking out a door that's on the second floor. The size uh, of the photo will depend, um, will, will determine the effectiveness of your photo, but not all of your photos can be the same size. You need to have variety. Um, and so you're looking for variety, you're looking for center of focus when you look at the overall page. That's something the photojournalist doesn't have to think too much about. But you as the editor do have to think about it. What, how am I going to use these to tell my, to, to, for the entire page? So on the one hand, you look at the photo as it relates to your, that each individual story, but on the other hand, you have to look at it as the editor who's doing an entire page and how does it fit into the whole page. That's why I insist, insisted when I took over the editing class on teaching desktop publishing. You can't be an editor in this day and age outside of the desktop publishing environment. I mean, there, there might be some people who can, but uh, it's, it's, it's now the minority who can, be, who can be a good editor and not know desktop publishing. And so you need to and, and have those sorts of challenges of making those decisions based on an entire presentation and not just based on one story at a time. And of course, you're going to see, is there any sort of retouching? And again, in the, in the broadest sense, that would include, uh, do I need to lighten this, you know, brighten this photo? Um, do I need to flop it? <clears throat> You know, those decisions uh, <clears throat> in a very loose way uh, uh, can be considered part of retouching. Um, but what do I have to do with this photo to make it most effective uh, in the, under these circumstances? So in cropping, you're, you're asking yourself, what is not necessary in this photo? And get rid of it. Um, and again, not every I mean, every, uh, many photos can be, can be cropped in different ways depending on what your purpose is. Are you trying to get the expression in the face, in which case you crop maybe a lot, most of their body off uh, because you don't really care about their legs and their feet and their, you know, anything below the waist. And so you're trying to get it big enough. You're trying to get that picture, that image big enough that you can see the expression in their faces. Um, on the other hand, their environment may be very important. And so you don't want to take them out of their environment. If there's somebody uh, out, you're interviewing somebody out, talking about the construction, and they're, they're you know, pointing out what you're doing and so forth, and you see the equipment in the background, you see the new building going up, well, obviously, you're looking for, I mean, some of the photos, you might take a photo uh, and, and crop everything but his face and stuff for a half-column mugshot sort of thing that you could put in, into your story someplace. Uh, but you're, you're more interested in, in where he's at and what he's talking about. And so you don't want to take him from that, to take that element out of the photo. Uh, part of it is also, as I mentioned, how many people am I going to include the in, in the photo? If you don't have much room for it, you can't include very many heads, as I said, as I say. Um, so if you're into one column, probably limited to two heads at the most uh, in a one column photo. Uh, three column photo, you can maybe get up to four heads, four people in other words. Um, but be hard to get more than four heads in a two column photo. When you get to three, now you can start getting something, you know, some might even go beyond more than two per column. You might then get to seven heads in a three column photo. Uh, but you just don't, and there could be some in the background that you don't really even care if their detail it disappears, uh, but you still have to be, you, you're concerned with the, the primary heads that you're looking at, the primary faces, but you have some detail on them. Again, the, the sizing will be part of the value, but also how you're using it. It's value in the whole page. It's value to the story and it's value to the entire page. Uh, have to be concerned with, with uh, with uh, in your decision making. 
Again, uh, this one says, you know, a picture of 15 individuals will be ineffective if it appears in a two column uh, space. And that's what I was just saying. That's, that's way, way, way too many heads in a two column. I'm not sure that I'm going to, I think I'm going to just stop there and go to another topic because uh, people are going to be doing other presentations related to that. Uh, I guess I will mention here, uh, the, this could actually uh, relate to uh, how you lay out your page. You could have, especially when you, when you start going to uh, tabloid more than with your broadsheet, but with your tabloid, your assignment will be to fill up two pages, two tabloid pages. It is possible that you could put, use a photo on page one with no story with it, but instead have your story on page two. And so your story on page one is your teaser to get them to look at the story on page two. And you ask, well, why would I do that? Well, you would do it because the page two story is the page, the story that you put on page two is not as important as the stories you have on page one, but you don't have good art. You don't have good art with the stories you have on page one. But you do have a you good do have good art with the story that you really think from it's uh, the importance of the story should be on page two or in a total newspaper even beyond that maybe in a whole different section um, and so you uh, you can use the photo on page one and refer to the story on page two again that's usually does not done when you're only dealing with two 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 pages but it's very, very, very frequently done if you're dealing with a whole newspaper. So if you're the news editor trying to plan out the entire newspaper, now you could take a story from, from, section, from section two, metro section, let's say, put, it, put the picture on page one and the story on the front page of the metro section, a whole different section. Or it's possible in some cases, uh, there's some even in these uh, 33 American uh, front pages where they've taken a story from the sports page and they put on page one. And so sports probably has its own section in that newspaper. So they're putting the, a, a, a good photo from the sports section on page one of the, of the newspaper and referring into the front section of the sports, you know, the, the sports section. Um, so uh, you do need to know how to do that. I did refer to it already. And you're gonna say something like C, um, you'll probably say, say more than just C story on page five it depends on what you said in your caption in your caption if your caption is clear what the story is all about which it should be then that may be all you in the caption with is C story on page C1 whatever um, and that should be sufficient to tie that picture in with a related story elsewhere okay as I said I'm gonna go ahead and close this down now okay so this photo has already been cropped it could be cropped a little bit more depending on what, what you want it to look like on the actual page. Uh, just I mostly wanted to, to quickly review some of the functions of this. Uh, if you go to image, for example, um, this is where you could uh, do a flip or a flop, however you want to call it. Um, so if I horizontal flip, uh, it's going to now look the other direction. Uh, this says KeyMap University in flipped form, however. So you might want to crop that out if you're going to, to uh, flip this one. Uh, otherwise, like I said, it's going to make you look a little stupid to have your uh, university name uh, backwards. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, in here also you can, uh, uh, of course, resize and, resa and resample it. So this is where you change the DPI. This is only 96. Um, there's only so much you can do with an existing photo, however. So I can tell it to be 300. That doesn't necessarily make it a really good 300. Uh, so at some point it was made into a 96. Um, so making a 300 at this point may be problematic. Uh, but maybe not as problematic as not making it 300, let me put it that way. Um, you have a, a number of varieties of things that you can do here. This is five inches by five inches, basically a little more than that. 
Um, I'm just going to say okay with that. The, uh, you can brighten it up. <clears throat> this is fairly bright already. Uh, you can convert to grayscale. Uh, down here under uh, auto adjust colors, you can let uh, Moodle, or rather, uh, infer from view itself, decide, well, maybe it's, uh, they'll suggest a different uh, coloration on it. Uh, you can revert back if you don't think it improved or you thought, think it, it decreased, uh, you can always, of course, undo what you just did. Um, uh, let me see, you can sharpen it. Um, the, uh, the presenter, the video presenter from, uh, from Quark talked about sharpening a photo. Um, that's just kind of making, distinguishing the, the lines of the images a little bit better. And so uh, that's, you can do that within Earth and View. Uh, besides the, uh, the auto adjust, you can go to color correction. Now you get two copies of your photo. Uh, one on the left is the original and one on the right um, is uh, your new version. You can go ahead and enhance it, bring this up bigger so you can look a little better. So. Uh, you might say, oh, let, let me try the contrast a little bit. So you start going, you start going this way and you go that way and just see what's this going to, it does also kind of sharpen it a little bit. Get him out of the way here. I won't be adjusting the, the original at this, at least not at this point. Um, so that might add some, you know, in some ways, maybe make it a little better. Uh, I don't play with the contrast too much, but... Uh, it actually does actually make it look a little sharper. Gamma correction, you can try that and see what happens when you do gamma. And so you're kind of experimenting a little bit, kind of so you can adjust, uh, you know, what you see in this is the original, this is the new one. Um, your saturation. You can play with that. So, you know, in a, in a good uh, uh, photo uh, editing software, you, you can play with quite a few things with it. And ultimately, this tells me whether I want to apply it to the original or not, or maybe save it uh, as, a, as a totally different uh, uh, photo. I'm just going to cancel out of that. Uh, under editing, I mentioned. Uh, you uh, have here your show show paint dialog, uh, and basically that is are the retouching tools that you would have in Photoshop, and they look pretty familiar. They look almost identical to what you have in Photoshop. Uh, I'm not going to go into those. Those who, those who have uh, played with Photoshop uh, can understand what those those uh, mean. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you decide to that you want to do uh, more. Uh, careful touch-ups of a photo. Uh, you can, uh, there's lots of videos for Earth View on YouTube, so you can self-train. It's not my purpose here to teach you a lot about Earth View, but it is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, free, and uh, which is good, and, uh, and maybe not quite as powerful as Photoshop, but for free, it's, it's a good, uh, it's, it's good. Uh, if I ultimately want to uh, uh, recrop this or make any changes, uh, but recropping, let me show you how to crop because that's not intuitive the way they have set up the cropping. So let's say I want to take a little bit off the top here. Um, you actually go to editing to go down to crop uh, selection. And uh, now you get rid of the unwanted uh, part of the photo. And uh, typically what I, if you already have the photo where you want it, then when you go to file to save it, uh, you can do a save as, so you don't hurt, so you don't do anything with the original, but you can also, you don't have to do a save as to change the name and make it and not override the original. So if I just say save in the original folder, that's in parentheses, that tells me where it's going to save it, but it doesn't actually tell me what um, what I'm going to name it. So I can rename it. So I can still go to, um, you know, just change the name. 
And so it won't, won't have changed the original at all uh, when I save it now this way. I can also change it from JPEG to TIFF, but just in the same way as uh, changing the DPI of a photo that's already been a smaller DPI can be somewhat problematic. It's also a little problematic to change a JPEG to TIFF because if the purpose is to get more detail and it's already been a JPEG, you've already lost that detail. So it's not going to do you a lot of good to change it from JPEG to go to TIFF. Um, preferably, it would have been a TIFF, you know, out of your camera or whatever. And uh, uh, or if you're going to do significant changes on it, uh, you might still, if you start with the original and immediately change it to TIFF before you start doing your your retouching and stuff, then there's value perhaps in, in putting it into TIFF, a little more detailed um, type of file. Okay, so just so you have some idea, again, there's lots of uh, videos on uh, YouTube to teach how to use uh, Earth and View, um, and uh, you can look it up uh, as far as uh, finding a place to download it from. Um, in our, I don't know if our Windows computers have a good uh, editing software, photo editing software, so we may be adding this to our uh, uh, to our Windows computers uh, in the Windows labs. We're still discussing the details. Um, I don't know exactly how we're going to do the final exam, but we clearly don't have enough chairs in the Apple computer um, lab. And I guess they have computer labs on the main floor, or plan to, or they do, of, the, of, the, of that same building, where they say they do have enough uh, apparently enough computers for everybody. And I'm presuming that those video, those uh, computers are Windows based, but I don't I've asked the question, haven't gotten the answer yet. So I don't I don't know for a fact. Uh, so I don't know what to tell you yet as far as preparing for the final exam, whether you need to really be really concerned about using Apple. Uh, another possibility that we talked about was actually having testing you in four different groups in, in basically your uh, having you do it in the Apple lab and doing it in your uh, uh, in your various tutorial groups, uh, but that would mean me taking me creating four different exams because I couldn't give you the same exam and then um, let you tell the next group what they're going to be facing. So, okay. So that will I will advise you as soon as I know. However, I am going to probably in the next couple of weeks give you a an assignment. That you that I will expect you to do on Apple, um, just so you some of you are are hesitant to learn Apple very much. You, you're used to Windows, and so I've noticed quite a few um, have have not done much with it. And so I will probably give you an assignment to force you to use Apple. Maybe even have you start it within the uh, in the uh, tutorial session itself, so I can see that you're doing it on Apple, um, because I think it's important. Uh, that you learn how to do Apple. Uh, a lot of uh, at the newspaper I was, the daily newspaper I was at when I first learned Quark, which was like I say, it would have been about 19 or 1990 or 1988, something like that. So uh, that would be 30 years ago. Um, that um, you know, we they decided they the best quality was Apple, and so they went Apple and went Quark. wasn't available at that time for Windows. It was only available for Apple, um, so that's what we used, and so I had to learn it then. But I haven't learned, used it since, so I'm, I'm rusty at it myself, too. Okay, well, that's uh, enough about Earth and View. Um, I want to uh, then go back to Quark. <clears throat> um, one of the changes in Quark that I didn't realize had been made, uh, uh, one of our student presenters, Panda, pointed this out. Uh, that uh, you can crop. In fact, it's built, made even easier to crop in, uh, in Quark now than it used to be. Um, so just to kind of teach that principle real quick, let's say I, uh, uh, by the way, on this layout, I've just kind of been using this to play with. Um, Besides the top photo being not real good quality, we'll forget about that. It, it is much better on the computer than it is on the projection. 
Uh, but we'd have the same problem. Again, if we printed it, it would not be high quality in a print any more than it is uh, on the projection. As I said, in the computer screen, it looks fine. It does not look good in the projection. Uh, so I'd want to lighten that up or probably not put it there at all, not use that one at all. But I was just grabbing a photo at the time. Uh, the other problem with this is that it doesn't have a true center of focus already. We can tell it doesn't have a true center of focus because the both photos are about the same size. Um, in fact, the one on the top is probably a little bit bigger than the one in the center, but the, uh, the one in the center is actually probably the more powerful photo. It has more weight to it. Why, why are, would you be attracted more to the, to the uh, one in the, uh, in the left um, than you would at the one at the top? Why, do you, why would your eyes immediately go to that one first? Anybody? What do you think? I presume your eyes for, go more quickly to the one in the, on the left, left center than the to upper one. Why? Anybody? Hello. I'm not going to deduct points. I might even give you points in my mind. Um, so why are your eyes attracted to the one in the lower, in the middle left than the one in the upper, upper right-ish? Brighter, that's one of it, that's one reason. Uh, so it's kind of one of those things that um, the, uh, the Quark tutor, the Quark presenter mentioned was it's not always size, it's optical size. So that's that, that also a hint here, brightness is part of it. As he mentioned, it's not always the physical size, but what's it look like, what the impact it has on you. What's the other thing about that photo that makes it uh, seem bigger? Which one? Which photo has bigger heads in it? The one on the left, right? The one on the center left. And so, if you have bigger heads in a photo, it's also going to increase the power of it. Um, so you have smaller heads in the upper right, you have bigger heads. So if there's a center focus on this because of the brightness and because of the size of the heads in the photo, it's the one in the middle left is the, is the center focus. Although technically it's smaller than the one in the upper right. The one in the upper right is three columns. The one in the, oh, maybe I'm wrong. I was thinking it was, uh, well, maybe it is a little, maybe the center one uh, is bigger. Um, I was thinking it was just three columns but it's about three and a half. They're pretty close to the same width, actually. The one in the upper right over uh, goes beyond the borders of the three columns as well, a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. Um, so in width, they're pretty close, I guess, to the same size. But definitely the one in the, in the center left seems bigger because of the size of the heads, because of the brightness, because of the clarity. Uh, it is more the center of focus. You don't want them to be that close. Uh, so if I adjust this page, I'd probably adjust. Um, is the another question? Is the one in the uh, left too low on the page to be considered the low, the this the uh, center of focus? If we let me go to the uh, uh, control zero, I believe is fit. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, it's supposed to be control zero. Okay, well anyway, so there's a the whole page. If I make the one at the right be a little bit smaller, get more of the story on the page, uh, is the one on the left too low to be considered the center of focus? What do you think? I don't have a good answer for it. <laughs> uh, what you think about it. It's a little bit low, maybe, but it's still above the fold. It's still, at least it begins above the fold. I guess I would tend, if I'm going to adjust this page and make this one smaller, first off, I might crop this one a little bit um, and to make it, uh, to, to still keep the images fairly good, a good size, I might crop here and crop over here, crop that person out of the photo. Uh, but they'll also make it smaller and maybe, and bring this text box up a little bit. Um, so that, uh, and then maybe I have the caption here in the right of this one. You maybe can't see that. Let me, I'll 
click on the caption itself. So I try to be uh, do something a little different, give it a little bit of white space and uh, put the caption on the right of it rather than below it. The norm is put the caption below the photo, but it's not universal. And sometimes you can, for artistic purposes, uh, uh, and just because you may find you need the, the space or whatever, the, the uh, photo is such that uh, you think um, you don't want to make the photo any bigger than it is. Uh, for example, this one has a low DPI, I mentioned. So uh, I know it's not going to be a real good photo if I were to print it out because uh, it's a low D it had a low DPI. Um, so that's one reason why I didn't make any bigger. I decided, uh, plus I was running out of space. That was another reason. Um, uh, so I, if I uh, shorten the, the uh, upper story and, uh, and make that photo a little bit smaller, then I might uh, be able to push this up and make it a little bit bigger, also make it truly the center of focus. So um, here, let me, uh, again, if you want to uh, center on just what you want to look at, you can take the zoom tool and just uh, kind of draw a, a box around what you want to look at, and it will uh, zoom in just that size. So this, this is the way of making exactly the size you want, more or less. Uh, so here, one reason why I made it as wide as I did was because it had this logo on it. Um, the name of it was a, it was, it was, the event was called a tech forum. Uh, so that's somewhat problematic to what to do with that. Uh, but I'm going to ignore that for now and pretend that that's not a problem. It is a problem, but I'm going to pretend that it's not. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and uh, shorten up. Uh, on the left, I will just try to leave the F on. Uh, the higher, the bigger you you uh, bring the image, uh, the easier it is for it to, to override. It, it has within this what's called, uh, let's see, I think it's under utilities, snaps, uh, maybe it's view, snaps, view, snap. Okay, this has, it has turned on what's called uh, snap to guides. And even though the, the in some cases, the, uh, it also has snap to grid. Um, I would say even though it's not uh, turned on, the snap to grid, there's some snap to grid that's kind of automated, automatic. Uh, let me put down my uh, microphone a second. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. I want to make it a little bit bigger still, so I can. Uh, so I'm going to go to Control. Uh, I'm not sure if that will let me do it. it used to be Control Two would let me. It doesn't now. I'm going to go to 200 and bring it a little bit tighter. And uh, I'll hold down the uh, Alt button and bring this over a little bit. When you the bigger you get, the more you can override the snaps. And so um, going down again to the. I wanted to leave a little bit of forum on it. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, I just want to come out just a little bit more. You can actually see them both at the same time. So I just want to, at this view, I can be much more meticulous. And so I can, I can see I've left the F in and not any more of the tech with it. So at least if I'm going to have that in there, which I don't like, especially the guy pointing at it, basically, although he doesn't know that, that's in essence what he's doing, um, that uh, Anyway, I can at least leave the whole word in, uh, the whole word of forum, uh, so we're not cutting that out. Um, I'll go back to uh, uh, the control zero, go back so I can see the whole thing. Over here, I can go ahead and, uh, and do a little more cropping here. And Control one will get us to 100%. Now this has already been cropped. <clears throat> so that's not a good demonstration of what I, uh, so this cropping now is being done automatically. Uh, it's, it's actually leaving the right, the, leaving the same size uh, as I, and letting, allowing me to crop it. Um, obviously, by the way, I don't want to leave this small of a column here. So if I really do want this this size, uh, 
if I want the proportion, I can go ahead and make change the proportion a little bit. So I make it a little bit smaller, although I'm now cropping it again. Uh, I don't want to crop that. Um, in okay, um, it with if you hold down both the shift and the control button, you can go ahead and resize without cropping it. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, so you don't. You can have some some text wrap around it, but don't make it too small uh, in the wrap around. And even then, you might uh, there are other options. Um, so if I'm going to make the other one the center of focus, uh, it could be like that. Could wrap uh, that's a, enough text with at ten point. That's um, not terrible, but I might instead move this whole thing over. Now let me go out uh, to control zero again so we can see the whole image. And I might go over here, make it further to the right, and, uh, and have um, it's kind of centered over two columns and let the text just wrap just slightly around both sides of it. Um, I'll need to adjust the caption also, obviously, with that. Um, so that might be a little better, and I can go ahead and bring this whole story up. And, uh, and then I can bring this whole package up, and I'll do that in just a second. Let me go zoom back into here. And so I'm going to go, maybe control one, go back to the normal size, uh, grab the caption, bring it up. And get over, I can grab that, bring that over. Uh, you need to make sure that uh, you have uh, you've been able to offset the uh, the text uh, so it's not too close to the caption. Uh, here it's probably a little bit too close. Uh, I can bring this uh, maybe a little bit in, but that still doesn't that that allow the words to also adjust to it. But if I want to uh, kick these words out, then I need to adjust and uh, let me bring this. Now where I can see this bottom part. Um, so I need this, this, uh, it's hard to see, but I think this is where it's pushing to the left. So I can increase this and get the uh, text from the story to move back out away from the caption. Um, now it may be a little bit too much space there. Uh, so I may just move the caption out back out where it was. Um, it should more or less match. See this the, this photo up here also has uh, been has pushed the text away. So this one is at uh, it's at Okay. Okay, I want to choose the round uh, run around. And so I see it's at six here, the run around on the photo six. So ideally your caption will match that. Uh, on both uh, sides, your caption would be the uh, same same uh, width or match up to the photo above it, ideally. And then uh, this then would uh, actually be less, bring it back down to six point. Um, it's eight. It's, it looks okay there. I, I don't want to get too much closer, though. 
So, but in theory, you'd have about the same uh, uh, offset the the uh, text from the photo and the and the uh, caption pretty much the same. But that even looks a little bit tight, so I may go back up to ten, push it off a little bit further. But okay, so. Uh, pay attention. This is your wraparound. So in order to see what you're doing down here, you need to be in, pick, uh, choose the right element here. Here's the runaround. So that deals with how far you're going to offset text from your image or from your, in this case, another text box. Your caption is another text box. You can also push text off of that, um, for example. Okay, so we have adjusted that now. Um, let me talk a little bit about... Uh, style sheets. You have uh, a couple of <clears throat> different things that you, you're dealing with here. First off, in your style sheets, you, you have both uh, a paragraph style sheet and you have a character style sheet. Uh, so the, the, the paragraph style sheet will help you control things like uh, a line left, a line right, a line center. Uh, it, it has more attributes that you can control under a paragraph than you can under character. But you don't always want to control those things. Uh, if you're just trying to increase the size of text, you don't necessarily want to, at the same time, control whether it's a line left or a line right. Uh, that you want it to be a separate function. So you have reason to create styles in both. I am not going to give you this, a style sheet. I mean, I've already, in essence, told you that I want text to be 10 point, um, uh, 10 point times New Roman. So my body text is set up under, uh, under uh, the, the paragraph uh, for a couple of reasons. So it, it does make it 10 point times New Roman, but also tells it to, uh, it should tell it to be justified. And I see not all of it has been justified uh, because I didn't uh, select the whole thing yet. Um, so let, let me just go ahead and uh, this is going to kill, if I select the whole thing here, it's going to kill my, my drop cap. Uh, but I made that a different style, so I can put it back again. So let me just go ahead and select all the text um, that's also killing the subheadline. Um, so I don't know, and the byline. Um, so. I'm going to go ahead and I, I'm not going to select everything. I'll, I'll start here at the second paragraph and I will go and uh, I clicked in there and I'll go to the end of the story and hit shift click over here. Now I've selected everything from where I clicked and now shift click, click, shift click. So I've select, selected everything from paragraph two to the end of the story. Now I can tell that to be uh, uh, text I actually end up with two. Uh, I have text and body text, I think, something like that. It, it, I think I made them the same, and I don't know why I made, I don't remember the time why I made them two. But anyway, body text now makes it justified, so it controls, this is a paragraph uh, style, so it justifies it as well as uh, creating its uh, uh, indent and so forth. So the indent, the justification, all that is controlled under a paragraph style, and it would not be controlled under a character style. Uh, with character style, I could choose one word here, like right now, over is chosen. I can make that 60 point if I wanted to. Now, why would I do that? I wouldn't, okay? I'm not gonna do that. That doesn't make any sense. But that's, what a, that's the difference between a character style and a paragraph style. All that does is, is enlarge the type of exactly what I have selected. And so it made that one word uh, 60 point in size. Obviously, I have no reason to do that here. Um, so it probably makes more sense for me just to say undo, but I've got, uh, I'm wrestling with, uh, uh, oops, trying to get rid of something else here. Okay, trying to get rid of that, among other things. Um, go back to Quark. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go back and hit body text again and make it. Uh, I actually, I just, all I, I just had to click one space in a paragraph in order to change the whole thing back again. I should be able to. I thought I could. Hmm. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Or maybe it won't overwrite a character if I 
change the character, it won't overwrite it. Um, that's interesting. Okay, so I end up having to undo it. I don't understand that. Most other style sheets, if you re, uh, if you hit a new style, it would do away with the old whatever you did before. Uh, but it may be that they've made it uh, so that the uh, paragraph style sheet does not override the character style sheet. You have to do that separately. Um, I don't know the idea behind that, but that seems to be what they did there. Okay, uh, meanwhile, however, I did create a, uh, a drop cap style. And so, let me see if I do. Just, I thought I could just click into here anywhere and it would change the whole paragraph. Let's try the drop cap. There it goes. Um, however, a drop cap should not have an indent in it. You should get rid of the indent if you're going to do a drop cap. And I thought that's what I had as part of the, uh, I can go up here to edit and see if I, um, well, it has a zero on the, on the first line, which means it shouldn't have an indent. I thought I took that off, but maybe it has a tab in there, which is why it did it. So well, let me see if there's just a tab. I just have to hit a... Well, doesn't seem to be. Well, it has its limitations. You're going to have to learn, learn uh, what the limitations are. But uh, uh, for some reason, I have to take off that uh, indent uh, in a different way. Um, but so you can make a, a style, different style sheets for whatever you want to accomplish. Um, but uh, the, the, the paragraph style sheet gives you more options, including the drop cap. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, I want you to create your own style sheets because that's important. It is possible to import somebody else's style sheet. But I'm, um, I may at some point, I may even put in the final exam. I may get away with all the style sheets or I may make you do your own style sheet. I don't know. Uh, it's good for you to know how to do your own style sheet. Even though, like I say, you may be playing with a little bit and I don't know why it uh, kept the indent when I hit the uh, big cap or the drop cap uh, style. I don't know. I don't understand that. Seems like uh, I have on the style zero indent, first line. I don't know. Uh, so I'm still learning uh, the newer version of uh, Quark myself. I don't know why they why that doesn't work right. Um, anyway, once you've done one, as uh, let's say I want to make another, I made a 72 point um, text here and a 60 point. Let's say I want to make another uh, 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 character style. <clears throat> Uh, I can base it on one of the ones that already exists. So let's say I base it on the 60 point. Um, but now I want it to be something else. So I'm going to call it uh, 48 point. I want that option also. So I'm calling the new one 48 point. It's going to have all the characteristics of a 60 point, except I'm going to change the point size, obviously. So I'm going to go uh, if I'm going to call it 48, I'm going to actually make it 48 point size. Um, you could have some that have bold, some that don't have bold. Right now, for the bigger ones, I would typically, a big headline would typically be bold. Not always. Um, but let's say it is here in this case. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make the 60 point character um, a bold headline. So now I have 48, 60, and 72. Um, this one here, let me see, did I make this with one of those? I don't think I did. Uh, 
Okay, let's look at this headline a second. I may or may not have used the style sheet with it. But let me go ahead and select it and uh, show you something else that you need to understand. Um, so let's say I make this one, uh, what is it now? Looking down here. Um, clicking the little text box down here to show me, let it show me what it is. And I've got this darn thing in the way. Um, I don't see it down there. Okay, excuse me, the text box. Okay, this is the text box. This is the text itself. So it's currently at 50, at 55 points. So that's obviously been customized. Uh, but let me select it and uh, tell it I want it to be 48. I'm going to use my 48 character that I just created. Um, and it, again, did not overwrite it. That's interesting, too. I don't know if there's a way to... They may have a, some way of doing it. So I'm going to go to no style first and see if that will overwrite it. It doesn't. So once I've created it, uh, there, there must be a way to override with the characters, but I have not learned that yet in that case. Okay, let me just create a new character then. Uh, let's say down here I'm going to do something else. I want it to be, uh, um, this one had headline is going to be lighter face because I have the, the larger, uh, the darker faces above it. Um, so I'm going to create a headline here. I don't even know what the story is about yet, but uh, okay. Let me see if that will go by just being clicked. Nope, I had the whole thing. Okay, so there we have 48 uh, point size. And there I just did a shift uh, control lesser than sign on my keyboard because uh, it wasn't all fitting. Although in headlining, by the way, we don't use the word and very much, so I'm going to get rid of the and and put in a comma anyway. Um, I'll select a triple click. We'll set, select the whole thing. Uh, I can go up a size. That's still too much. I want it to be not bold. That looks bold to me. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be down here. Oh, yeah, it was. Okay, but it still doesn't quite fit. Um, I'm going to go down here and make it 46. And it goes down. It does fit at 46. Anyway, what I was trying to demonstrate there was... If, it's, if you're using the character, uh, the character uh, style sheet, it does allow you to adapt it um, within, uh, you know, uh, down here. So I wanted to make it a little bit smaller, well, a little bit bigger than 48, but a little bit uh, smaller than, uh, than the next size up. So it's now, I guess it has, it, excuse me, it's 46 point now. So I made it one, I wanted to start off with 48, but I needed to make it 46 to fit. Um, and so you can change that. Let me go up here. We, what we saw was that this was not, and there may be a way to override it, but this was not responding to the character, uh, style sheet once I set it. Now, now it did. Okay. So now it did go to 48. Uh, when I tried it a second ago, it didn't. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because I wasn't show, well, let me see. Maybe because I was not in the text tool when I did it. Anyway, we can go ahead and, uh, and resize it. Um, that's interesting. But anyway, so it was resisting. Maybe I had to be in the text tool, like I said. Uh, so now I can go ahead and increase that if I want to. Uh, that's too big. Uh, so 55 or 54, whatever else I had. So I'm going to have to go individually. 
So 48 again, I might go uh, try 50, try 52. And I think I had it at 55 before, didn't I? Okay, so back to 55. <clears throat> okay. Um, let me go ahead and uh, I say I want to bring another photo down here. I'm just going to grab anything. I don't really care what it is for my demonstration purposes uh, for what I want to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit Control E as your keyboard command to bring something in. Uh, so I'm going to choose a photo that's in here. May not have to do anything with anything that I'm talking about, but uh, let's see. Uh, this is a former student of mine that uh, participated in the London Olympics, so I'll bring her in. Um, okay, I didn't put in a, a box yet, so that's stupid. I need to undo that. Okay, I need to draw my box, obviously. Uh, think about other things at the moment. So I'll bring it down. So that's more or less the size I, I want it. I've got a problem there that has too many heads, but we'll ignore that for now, too. Um, no, that's, again, because I'm in the, zero, the total frame mood, I, I can't get it quite the size I want it to be very easily. I'll enlarge it in a second. Um, but now I'll go ahead and uh, click in there and tell it I want my former student in here. Uh, now it's much bigger than the box I left for it. I'm going to go into the tool uh, item. Um, and I want to zoom in here at about uh, control uh, one. So we can see what we're dealing with. Um, obviously that's not fitting right. Uh, so probably the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, tell it to uh, fit the uh, picture to the box. So I do know what size I want the box. So we'll bring that in. Um, we see the box isn't the right size itself uh, that, I, that I want. Um, so first I'm gonna go ahead and, and deal with the box again. Um, and I want it to be I actually want it to probably be up here a little bit. I need a caption, so I need a little space for caption. Um, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me try the other direction. Uh, let me do it again, uh, fit uh, scale picture to box again, see what we get here. It's still it's trying to keep the same proportions, so we see it's too narrow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the photo itself, and to fill that space, I wanted to fill. And uh, so now it's the right width, uh, but uh, I'm cutting off too much of their body, so I want to bring this up, so I'm going to get in the center of it and bring this whole photo up and it'll adjust inside the box. Uh, so now it's the right width, but you see it doesn't fit at the top, uh, but that's not, but that's what I wanted to crop off. I want to crop that off. So this, in an original photo, once you have it the size you want, uh, now you just hit enter and just click someplace else, get rid of, get out of there a second and just, uh, it will just automatically crop itself. So that part that was not in the box is now gone. Uh, by the way, however, I can go ahead and uh, flop it. Um, so again, I'm going to want to, uh, uh, in this case, I'm sele selecting it and I'm going to modify, I believe is where it's at. And I believe that's where I can uh, flip it. Um, down here, flip horizontal. 
and hit OK. So now I have them looking into the story rather than out of it. And not a process, sometimes it just wanders a little bit. I don't know why. But now back to the, oh, I was going to the green line. It should be out to the blue line. So actually, I do need to uh, bring it out a little bit, go into that actual photo again, uh, bring it out a little bit, and um, move it up just a little bit too. And again, I've done uh, uh, resize a little bit, a little bit, uh, made a little bit of a change in the photo. And again, once I click out of it, the part that uh, I don't want in the fill photo is now gone. Um, so you can crop your photos <clears throat> uh, within Quark um, and resize and crop and so forth and flip as you need to. Okay, another thing I need to uh, teach you is how to link text boxes. If you, if you do it like I've been showing you, you don't really need to do a lot of, uh, of uh, linking. So what I've been showing you is, I don't even know if this is a real story. <laughs> I, uh, let me see if this is a, a story that actually comes in here. I'm gonna go ahead and, and hit the text tool and I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, bring in a and create a, a text box. So this is just the story portion here. Caption would be next to it, underneath the photo. Okay, so uh, I need to bring this up a little bit, but uh, let me just so bring it up now. And I may actually have just a little bit too much room, but I, I don't have enough room on the, uh, let me go up here to the headline. It should be down a little bit lower, closer to the story than to the <clears throat> story above it. This is a text, this is a graphic box around the story above it. So it shouldn't be that close anyway. It should be closer to its own story. Uh, going back then into this one, um, I'm gonna select that box and I'm gonna hit Control E again uh, to import. And I don't know that this uh, is a, um, I, I wrote a story on this subject, but then I think I lost the actual story um, someplace. So I'm not sure this is an actual story. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, I don't have a story apparently with that photo. Uh, so I'm just gonna pretend it's a different photo or a different story. It, it doesn't really matter for our purposes here. I'm gonna take an Oscar story. Uh, no, I wanna use that uh, someplace else. I'm gonna use another story. I'll use the grill story. It has nothing to do with this photo, but we're gonna ignore that. Okay, so again, if I don't do anything else, it's gonna come in too wide. Uh, I say I meant two columns wide. In some cases, that looks good. That's not necessarily a bad thing uh, to have a, a two column uh, wide story. That's the limit. You don't want to go more than two columns wide. Don't, nobody try to go more than two columns wide. Um, if you remember, uh, if you watch the video, one of the things that the Quark tutor, the Quark uh, uh, teacher said was that uh, I think he, he said the maximum was something like from seven words to 13 words or something on a line. Is, is your, after you get to 13 words, uh, you start getting lost if it's too wide. And if it's, too, if it's shorter than seven, it's, it starts having some very funny breaks on it. Uh, so uh, here we can count uh, across the whole line, uh, years only line, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, so it fits in about 11 or 12 words. So it's, it's okay, it's within the range that he was talking about. And it's not so wide you get lost as you're trying to read from left to right, and it's not so narrow that it looks funny. So you can go to a two column uh, 
a layout with some of your stories, and it does create a different, uh, it, it again creates kind of contrast between your different uh, stories to have one that's wider than the other one. Uh, it can look kind of funny sometimes too, so you have to be a little careful with it. Um, it but if you're, if you're keeping the standard columns, if you're kind of respecting the standard columns, uh, so that you don't have one that's a column and a half, another one's two columns, another one's one column. If you have too many different widths on your columns, it starts looking a little strange. Uh, but having some contrast in your column, your, uh, the, the width of your columns is a good thing. It that does create uh, some contrast. So in this one, I might actually leave it in two columns, but I'm not going to for my purposes right now, because I'm just trying to remind you uh, that once I select this uh, box, this text box, um, I can come down and hit the text box down here, and I can tell it how many columns to have in this text box. Now, I don't have to do it this way. I can create one text box in one column, another text box in another column, another text box in another column, and link them all together. But why would I want to do that? It's more hassle. And so, as long as I'm doing something fairly standard, uh, I might as well just select, you know, put in one text box and say, okay, I want this to be two columns. And, uh, and there's just two columns. And so I don't have to link these two, because they're, they're not separate text boxes. They're separate columns within a text box. And so that makes it uh, more reasonable. Um, I do notice that we have uh, some uh, um, funny stuff going on in here, so I'm going to go ahead and select it all. Um, by the way, when I hit, when I click in here and hit Control A, in Windows anyway, that selects even the parts of the story I can't see. That's important to understand and important to remember. By hitting Control A within this text box, I'm selecting text I can't see as well as the text I can see. And so that's important if I want to change it. So I'm, not, I'm going to first off go up here and, and uh, uh, go to a uh, uh, body text. Um, we are still getting some false style from outside. Um, and so let me see if I can uh, overwrite it a different way. Let me see if I can tell it no style and then come back. No. Okay, well, I just did. I hit no style and then I hit the uh, body text and it did do away with that extra uh, word styling that was in it. Uh, notice this. This is weird. Something's still screwing it up. Uh, it was, I think it was because uh, it considered particularly and dramatic as one word or something. It was trying to connect those. Watch out for that stuff. Try to get rid of it. Um, again, I can go up here, and because I created a style for byline, I should, hopefully, be able to override the, the body text style and go to byline. So that's now my byline style. I can go ahead and select this uh, second paragraph. And let's see what happens when I tell it to go drop cap. Um, drop cap. Okay, I think I know why it, what happened, anybody guess what happened there? I gave drop cap and it moved everything over, but there's no, there's no letter there. So what, what, what went wrong with my drop cap uh, style sheet? Sometimes when you're dealing with this sort of technology, you start have to become kind of a detective as well. Okay, what the heck screwed up there? Um, what happened here is there must have been a space before that first letter. So it's drop cap in the space. And so I need to get rid of the, the empty space. Um, and now I have a drop cap of a T. So a little bit of detective work sometimes. If it doesn't work quite right, try to figure out what, why, is, why did I have a drop space here? Well, because you had a space there. So it took the very first character it had and made a drop cap out of it. In this case, 
it was a space. So it gave a drop cap space. Um, as you're uh, creating, by the way, as you're creating, uh, let me go to, uh, I'm going to go back to text and uh, make a new, uh, well, I'm going to make a new uh, a paragraph, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, base it on, on the text. Uh, so it's based on text. Um, and I'm going to call this uh, Top Cap 2. Uh, why is it doing that? Okay, I'm going to uh, select this whole paragraph and tell it, uh, I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to actually uh, do what I want to do, and then I'm going to save it as a, I'm going to try that. I'm going to save it as a, uh, a style after I'm done stylizing that. Uh, so, again, I've got a little bit of a problem here that I can't see the bottom very well. Um, but I'm going to go to text first off. And I'm going to, uh, let's say I want this one. I'm going to have a style where in some cases I can make the text a little bit bigger, uh, if, like with a primary story. Um, that would be a possi possibility. I've actually done it before. Had, a, uh, had my first paragraph be bigger than other paragraphs. So it's kind of like doing a summary sentence, but it's, the, your, it's actually your lead. Um, and let's say I, part of it is going to be, it's going to be bold. So I want it to be a little bit bigger and bold. So it, again, this is not done very commonly, but I did used to do this in, in one of my publications. Um, let's go with uh, in the paragraph attributes, and I believe that's where you have drop cap. So I can click drop cap. Now that has a drop cap. Uh, however, I need to get rid of the uh, you should not have an extra space uh, or an indent in front of it. Uh, it, it, does, it. It's unnecessary and looks kind of strange. So I'm going to get rid of the indent down here. So I'm going to put a zero under indent and hit enter. Now the indent is for my drop cap is done away with. Um, again, we're seeing kind of a funny break here. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, back and a space. Okay, so I got it to relieve that weird uh, spacing. So let's say I want this to be a different type of, uh, of a, a paragraph style. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, new. And I will call this uh, drop cap two. This is a different type of drop cap. Um, and I'm going to hit uh, okay. You see there now is a drop cap two up here, and if I go up here and uh, look at it uh, and, and look at editing, we'll see what it uh, if it has everything I want it to be. Uh, it has no indent, has a drop cap. Uh, by the way, you can determine how many lines of uh, drop cap you want. It defaults at three, but you could have smaller drop cap, for example, uh, if you wanted to. Uh, I still want it to. Uh, uh, alignment justified that's consistent still so um, so I can create my my paragraph style and then hit the uh, the uh, new style and it and uh, and create it that way that seems to work better than trying to create it from scratch I don't know why um, so I have another type of uh, drop cap bold face bigger type um, still the same sort of drop cap Uh, over here, I'm going to go ahead and create a, uh, I need my caption. I'll put my caption over here. Uh, so I need another text box and create it in here.
I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, click the uh, caption style I created. I think I have over here. Caption. I can get it the size I want it to be. Uh, I think I went ahead and decided to go, let me look down here just to make sure. I decided to go 12 point on the captions. Uh, so you can go to 12 point if you want to with your captions. Um, Uh, that didn't fit. I went and typed it blind. And so I need to obviously do a little more uh, cropping. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, crop up a little bit further in order to fit this in. I need to line up the bottom. That looks like it's pretty much lined up. Um, within here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and yeah, that's not doing that. Let me see. We need to try to, there we go. Once I, I double clicked it, I could go ahead and get the original image again and, and re, reposition the image, get uh, crop off more off the top and less on the bottom. So you have handles. You kind of have these uh, blue handles on the image itself. Uh, that I'm kind of pointing to up here, and you have the box handles that are for the photo, the uh, the photo box, so to speak, the photo frame. Um, so you, you need to see which is which. In this case, in order to readjust the image inside the photo frame, I had to click again, uh, double click, and get into the show, so these blue handles showed up uh, for the picture itself. And uh, again, I just hit enter and snap out of there, and it's uh, re redone itself. Um, I see I'm a little bit tight down here still. Um, maybe I just grab this handle just a little bit, just bring it down. And so doing now, it's no longer even with the text over here. Uh, let me. Uh, I'm going to bring down a, a rule um, uh, guide down here. So I'm going to just drag it out of the ruler and line it up at the bottom of the uh, of the bio, or of the caption. And I want these others to line up with it. Uh, oops, it's a little bit high. Uh, actually, anchor actually does line up pretty well with it. So it's just the second. Uh, column that's not lining up right. Um, I might want to go in a little bit tighter and go to 200% or I can just grab this uh, tool here and just say, okay, I want to just, I want to particularly see, uh, well, maybe the, right in this area so I can see that things are lining up. So I see the bottom of the caption is lining up with the first column. And so now how do I get this to line up? And one way, now, this is actually going to require a jump, so actually that's easier still. So let me show you what I did with that. So I'm going to skip that lesson for the moment. Uh, over here under content, I have uh, jump, but I, that turned out, oh yeah, jump, yeah, that is what I want. Okay, content. That's another thing that you can play with. And so um, <clears throat> you have to be a little careful with how you do that. I'm going to drag over some content that I created the other day, and this is the jump line. So this is a text box with the uh, jump line in it. And uh, if I get it over here properly, well, let me see. Stop it. Somehow I just lost Quark.
What did I do? I don't know what I did. Well, we're running out of time, so I may not be able to, I can't show everything at once anyway. I've shown you enough stuff. Uh, I have two, two files with the same name is one problem I have here, um, which is a stupid thing to do. Um, so anyway, the other one. And I lost my material and somehow that closed on me. Um, okay, just to recap, I don't have time to show anything else today. Um, so to recap, you can create some, uh, well, let me do show, try to show one more thing, see if it's going to work. And maybe I didn't, maybe I'm just not doing it right. Maybe I can't do it the way I want to do it. Um, Okay, I'm going to try it again. Okay. So I created a content for, for my jumps. Um, we actually see it being in practice up here. Let me draw this one up here and just see um, if I... Uh, I'm going to zoom in up here. Okay, let me check one thing that I was, one problem I was running into. Let's see if it, if I alleviated it or not. We'll find out. Okay, so I created a jump line. Uh, and I made it so that it would uh, have offset. You have to be very careful when you, if you're going to use this method of doing it. I was experimenting a little bit because um, it, if it, uh, if it synchronizes with this other text, then when I, when I change this one, it'll change that one. So you have to turn off the synchronization if you're going to do it this way. So I created uh, this jump line here. Marketing continues on page two. I say I selected it and saved that into my content. And then I, I had to turn off the synchronize, what, whatever is going to, if I bring it out again, it's not going to synchronize with the original. Um, and so now I can have, uh, uh, well, like I say, I don't have to retype this. It, it has more than just the type style. It also has an offset to it. And so um, as I move this around, it will uh, move other stuff around with it. Uh, so I can exactly try to line this up so that the bottom of this lines up with the bottom of the text, which is what I was trying to do a second ago. I can bring down another green line here from the ruler, and now I can go ahead and uh, uh, adjust this. Maybe I just go ahead and raise the text box just a little bit to make the adjustment to make sure that, and this again may have me have to go in and uh, go to 200% uh, to make it uh, get away from the, the, the snaps that it's uh, doing. I'm going to go to 200 percent and uh, and uh, make sure that this lines up with the the column next to it. Um, so there's some things you can do with that also. I see I'm all the way I'm over to the left a little bit too much. So I need to bring it over here to the right. Um, so you may have some things like that, like jump lines, I think is ideal for making uh, some content, some separate uh, content uh, uh, that I can just drag and drop into it. I also, however, uh, made a drop, a, 
Uh, same thing with a uh, the shadow box. And so I I created one shadow box, and now I don't ha and now I don't have to create one again. I can take this one and adapt it. This is the only text I have here, so the only way I can demonstrate this is to kill what I already have. So I created this shadow box with a pullout quote, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and kill that one. And then, then I'll go over here to my shadow box, and if everything's working right, I can bring this over where I want it. And uh, this happens to have the right quote in it, but in theory, I could uh, drop it into a different story and just change what's inside the box. So the box would be still there. I just have to change the quote and change the who said the quote. And I have my shadow box already to go, having created it once. I don't have to create it again if I save it as content. Uh, so that uh, we used to do a lot of that uh, at the daily paper I was at using Quark. And I, I think there's another tool we used to have, and I'm not sure we have it here now. Um, I can see also we need to offset this uh, the text a little bit more and make that part of the part of the content. I thought I did, but maybe I didn't. Um, so the style sheets, the content uh, uh, menu. Um, we, I'm pretty sure what we called it, I know it has something called library and maybe I just need to work with their library a little bit better. I think we called it, we were using what they called the library when we had a lot of different stuff we could drag and drop, including uh, I tried making an entire box story with, uh, with a text box for the headline and a text box for the story and a spot for the photo and basically make, okay, this is what we're starting with, we can, make, we can adapt it but bring over an entire bo uh, boxed story content, I couldn't see, it seemed like uh, the, the, it wouldn't let me do it as content with all those elements to it. Um, and so, uh, but I'm going to have to experiment with the library function. I know it has something called library, but I, I'm not sure it's doing what we used to do. But basically, it was something like what I'm doing with content. I could just drag and drop some element like a shadow box and change just that one element um, or just uh, and then change the, like I say, change the content of that element like this, adapt it a little bit. Okay, well, we're out of time and then some. Um, so we'll see you in tutorials. Uh, I'm going to be giving you tomorrow, I've just, uh, I'll be giving you your stories for your next project uh, and your photos and everything you need. Uh, so uh, for tutorials one and two, you'll have everything you need to start your major project two uh, as of tomorrow in your tutorial. Okay, thank you. If you have anything, uh, I can answer some quick questions, but we have the... That so the army outside the door ready to raid us and so forth, so I may have to go outside to answer your questions. <laughs>